Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about forging large stocks. So on the right there, you see a 35-pound hunk of S7 tool steel. It's four-inch round, and on the left was a piece of two-inch square that we're breaking this large stock down. We're forging it down for some power hammer dies. I'm going to begin by heating um, a large pair of tongs that I had on hand that uh, were close to a four-inch round but weren't fit for them. And so I was just checking the fit um, as I heated it up and then I drug over a two inch uh, thick piece of plate to act as an anvil so that I could size these tongs just right on the floor. No need to fight um, all the weight. So I'm pinching um, the you know four inch round with the tongs and then I'm hitting it with a hammer um, just to fit and squeeze that just so everything fits you know totally proper. Um, now, I have a large stock of industrial sized tongs left over from a shop that I used to work at in Philly that when they closed, the owner um, sold me a bunch of stuff and uh, treated me really well. Um, but a lot of these old industrial tongs, um, they are uncomfortable in the sense that the reins um, are very narrow on the ends. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm gonna spread the ends of the reins of the tongs out into a T-shaped cross section. The die that I have mounted in the power hammer um, has like a groove in the bottom of it. So as I hammer down, um, it forces the material out to the sides, which will make the grip on the tongs more comfortable, but it also forces some material down into the center. So again, giving the ends of these reins like a T-shaped cross section. Uh, this is kind of a copy of some of my favorite tongs by Grant Sarver, off-center forge tongs. And um, just because this is so awkward, um, I'm going to try to do both uh, ends of the reins in one heat. Um, I'm not drastically changing these. Just need to, you know, spread that out a little bit again and forge that T. So lay down on the floor. These tongs alone probably weigh 20 pounds, so maybe 15, 20 pounds, a little awkward. Uh, but I got both ends of the reins done and um, then I let them cool down. So let's talk about um, some keys to forging large stock. Um, this is it, this is one key right here. Having tongs that are um, sized well for the work and um, you know fit properly and are going to hold the work well is one key. Um, the next key is I have a bucket of uh, tong rings that I'll go over and um, having a tong ring to put on the end of the stock here you can see that cross section that I forged in there um, kind of t-shaped um, but um, having a tong ring on the end helps really reduce the fatigue when handling these heavy billets. So now we're ready to forge on this four inch round, heated it up in the forge. And um, I'm just gonna break it down roughly as much as I can on these first couple heats. Here I've moved to the nasal 3B, which has like a 285 pound ram. And I am giving it, you know, all I can, um, you know, with this hammer. I am full on, full power. Um, because you could argue that this size stock is almost a little bit big for this hammer, um, but it does it well. It takes several heats, but it you know breaks it down no problem. So a couple keys with safety. You can see me working um, with the tongs on my side. When I'm working huge billets like this, I never stand with the tongs directly in front of me, like square to my gut, um, because I've heard stories in industrial shops where tongs literally got shot through a man and he died very quickly. Let's just leave it at that. So tongs on the side. Um, now I will say this hammer is mounted on a temporary base, a steel plate. So I'm 6'4", fairly tall guy, but even for me, this hammer is a little bit high. Um, I'd like to see the center of the reins of the tongs down like, you know, at like belt level about four to six inches lower so that you can push down on them, you know, as you're forging. Um, the tongue rings actually slipped off here, so um, you can see I had a little bit of trouble on this first heat. 
uh, but I got a different size tong ring on the uh, the next heat and that wasn't an issue um, but for the first part I'm just eyeballing this now I am going to um, have one of my guys help me with a sizing block in a minute as we break this down to exactly like two inch square we want to leave it a little bit heavy for machining so um, we've cut a block on the bandsaw that is like 2.1 inches long it's just a little bit long um, you know a little bit larger than two inch so that we can forge it to 2.1 and then machine off the rest so again at this point um, this is like the second heat I'm just breaking this stock down uh, we'll break one end down perfectly to two inch square uh, and then we'll grab it from that end and break the rest of the four inch round down uh, having that precisely two inch square will allow me to grab that end with you know obviously tongs that are set up uh, for two inch square which is already done but this is so much fun uh, working big stock like this you get to see just the power um, that these beautiful machines have i will say uh, the dies in the 3b currently are drawing dies they're not purely flat dies they have a slight crown to them so that really helps move the material out a whole lot faster i'm probably going to do a video coming up on power hammer dies and if i only had one set of dies uh, what would they be flat dies or drawing dies or combination dies i have a lot of opinions on that i like to dive into in the future but um again just hammering this out um this is again s7 tool steel so you know it doesn't move like mild steel or wrought iron it's very stubborn um takes a lot of power to do that Okay, so now on this heat, I'm gonna bring the bar back in. It's probably about two and a quarter inch square here. And Jared is going to help me um, with that stop block. Now this'll just prevent us from over hammering the material down too thin. As he holds that block on the die, um, eventually we'll both hear and feel um, the ram, the, the, the upper die hit that stop block. And again, it's just gonna prevent me from breaking this down too far. This is how you do semi-precise forging on open dies. Uh, once I'm done and I have that close enough on the hammer, then I'm gonna go over to the 200 ton press. And I'm sorry I didn't get footage of that. Uh, one of the disadvantages to being a working shop, you know, trying to film content as we work is I don't always get everything perfect. But thanks so much for the support. As we grow, we'll just get better with, um, you know, maybe farming out some of our filming and showing every step even better. So appreciate that subscription and those thumbs up and comments. It all helps. Thanks so much for um, this channel. We're nearing 3,000 subscribers. And um, if you hit that button, help us get over to the, to the next mark. But here, that end is now two inch square as I'm done pressing it and we'll come back to the hammer and um, break the other end down. I'm gonna share a few quotes from the fall 1995 issue of the Anvil's Ring from Havana. And this is a article called Safety or the Hard Cold Facts by Clifton Ralph. He was an industrial blacksmith who spent his entire career doing truly industrial size forging and he was nice enough to step out into Havana and many chapter groups and demonstrate and really teach people how to be safe while forging. Um, but here's a few quotes from that article, starting with this one. If you hold the steel too high, too low, or do not have a good tong hold on it, or try to use flat jaw tongs or pickup tongs instead of good holding tongs, or when forging with the tongs towards your belly, you can get seriously hurt real quick. And again, that was kind of what I was talking about at the beginning with, you know, beginning by having a safe place to, you know, hold the stock. One thing I'll say is in this area where the 3B is, I actually have a quarter ton jib crane that I could, you know, hook up um, with a chain hoist to this, but 
um, it's kind of not necessary. If this was maybe a little bit heavier, um, that would be necessary, but um, it's not. Uh, here's another quote from Clifton Ralph that um, is real food for thought. And he says, the first five or more years, I got hurt a few times because of ignorance or lack of experience. Later, I got hurt most of the time because of repetitive boredom or not paying close attention to what I was doing. And I gotta say, that is so true in the sense that sometimes the more experience you can get, um, you can, you know, get hurt by just, you know, taking for granted how powerful um, the tools are that you're working with. I know several uh, smiths who have broken hands from, you know, putting their hands under the power hammer. That's an absolute no-no. Um, you got to do everything you can, even when changing dies out, um, to never put your hands under there. Um, let's talk about safety gear for a second. I, I'm doing a good job in the sense that I have hearing protection on. I wear, I'm wearing steel-toed boots, but there's two pieces of safety equipment I should probably be wearing. First and foremost in my mind is a leather apron. Um, and then second would be, you could make the article that, uh, the argument, I mean, that um, I should be wearing a hard hat. And um, I don't ever wear hard hats while forging, but this is starting to get close to that size where you would think about doing that. And believe it or not, the hardest part of breaking down a bar like this is actually forging the middle section of the bar because you have so much weight out in front of you on the opposite side of the die where you're holding. Um, if it's not perfectly held, if it's not perfectly level, the hammer will grab it and you know, you'll get a little bit of shock. Um, that, that center portion is the hardest uh, portion to break down and the only way to do that effectively is to have the material hot enough. Um, you have to have enough power to move the material, obviously, but you also have to have the heat. If you try to do that at too low of a heat, and there you can see that little bit of shock, um, you know, from that effect as, uh, and some of that is, uh, these tongs are fighting me a little bit as well. Um, but, uh, and whenever you have, you know, a lot of material on the opposite side of the die, you can get a lot of shock in the reins of the tongs. So again, we have two sets of dies for the 3B. A flat set of dies that have a hole in them for holding, um, you know, some bolt-on dies, and then this set of drawing dies. Um, the material that I'm stretching out is for two 35 pound hammers. Um, this is going to become the dies, uh, top and bottom dies for those hammers that we're working on building. And um, we're just looking to improve all of our tooling on the forging side, on the smaller side of things. I mean, obviously having a 3B and a 2B, um, we have, you know, anything two inch or one inch, you know, all the large stuff covered. Um, but if you notice, the last couple of videos that I've done have been all about uh, smaller hammers. I've done a couple of videos on the 15 pound hammer that we built. Um, we recently repaired the 35 pound champion. And now all of this work that we're doing is for the other two 35 pound air hammers that we're building um, based on Dave Hammer's bulldog plans. The amazing thing about those hammers is they'll act just like this nasal in the sense that they can do repetitive hammering, um, but they will also do single blow hit, which is an awesome feature. Um, and we recently repaired the, uh, well, not repaired, but we recently rebuilt the 110 pound hammer um, that we bought a couple years ago. And we retrofitted that to the same system. So that hammer will also have single blow mode. Yeah, Alan's working with me here with that sizing block that again was cut to 2.1. Um, you see that, you know, bar bounce a little bit as I try to work that center section. Um, and I'm actually working a little bit over the halfway point on this bar. Um, he's nodding his head to let me know that he can feel the die bottoming out. And then again, over to the 200 ton press to um, 
press it flat. And we also used a 2.1 inch um, block under the press to keep from um, over uh, pressing the material. So all in all, just a lot of heat, a lot of power, and a lot of work to um, stretch uh, these bars out. I also calculated um, how much two inch square I would get out of the four inch round and allowing for some loss of weight um, due to scale. Every heat that you take, um, they say you lose about 1% of the bar's weight in the scale loss. Um, that can go up or down depending on how um, hot you get the material and if you're running the um, fire at a reducing or an oxidizing atmosphere. Um, and that can play into coal or gas. Obviously, I'm heating this up with a gas forge, um, but you can run a coal forge or a gas forge um, too hot and uh, lose material due to that. So again, just a lot of hammer work as we break this down. Um, nothing super fancy in this video other than the fact that I wanted to talk about um, a few keys uh, to forging large stock. Again, good tongs, proper safety equipment, tong rings, enough heat, enough power, um, and then just good sound safe working practices. Um, so I really appreciate, again, all the support that we're getting here on YouTube as this channel continues to grow. And as it does grow, if we can ever get it to the point where it's making money, we'll actually get some real film crews and some real editing done on these videos. Um, but for now, thanks so much for watching and all the support. And um, we'll keep putting the videos out there. Thanks again. Take care.